Okay, to get started with my beef chimichangas, I am going to use one pound of lean ground beef. This is a 90 lean meat to 10% fat ratio. I'm also using half of a small onion diced, a quarter teaspoon of ground cumin, a half teaspoon of granulated garlic powder, one teaspoon of chili powder. I'm also using a half teaspoon of granulated onion powder, and I'm going to use a half teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of cracked black pepper. You can do those things to taste. Okay, so here I have a skillet preheating and I have added one tablespoon of oil and now I am going to saute my chopped onion. I'll also add a pinch of salt and that'll just help sweat them out and saute better. I'll do this until they start getting a little bit golden brown and translucent. Now, if you do not like using raw onion in your recipes or even sauteing them, you can exclude this, but I like to use it when I'm sauteing and browning ground beef. My onions are sauteed and have a little tinge of golden brown color, so now I'm going to add my ground beef. And you can definitely use like an 80-20 ratio, just make sure to drain the fat, but I like using a 90-10 ratio. It helps eliminate some of that fat. So I've broken up my ground beef, and now I'm going to add my salt. Again, I'm going to add somewhere between a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon. You wanna add it to your preference. I'm also going to add the other dry seasonings and spices. Now. If you do not have some of these spices, you can definitely use what you have. You could even use maybe a pre-packaged taco seasoning if you like that, or just salt and pepper. It's up to you. I'm just going to season this sort of like a taco seasoning. Sometimes I like to add bell pepper to this and potatoes and some make somewhat of a picadillo. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically like a Mexican style hash with veggies in it with the ground beef. Um, but today I'm just using ground beef, but you can definitely play around with other fresh ingredients to add to your ground beef filling. Okay, so now that my ground beef is completely broken apart, cooked through, and somewhat brown, I am going to set it aside, and I'm going to start working on my beans. Now, this is a beef and cheese chimichanga, but I like to add beans. Now, if you are not a fan of beans, you don't have to add it. But what I'm doing today is using some leftover charro beans that I made. These are well seasoned, but if you're using canned pinto beans, you want to season it to your preference and add what you like. But these are well seasoned. So here I have a pan preheating and I am going to add around a tablespoon of lard. Now, if you do not want to use lard, you can use some oil. And if you just don't want to use any type of fat in this, add a little bit of water and just work it in until you're able to mash all of your beans. So I'm not gonna use much liquid in this because I do want it to be a stiff texture. I don't want it runny because then it'll just ooze all over the place when you're trying to assemble your chimichanga. So I, I, I want to make sure I don't add too much liquid to the pan. So I'm kind of guessing at the amount of beans I'm going to make today, but I would say use around two cups of cooked pinto beans and season the way you like. Or if you made a pot of charro beans and you had some left over like I do, and I always have leftover beans, I like to freeze them, um, maybe around two cups of pinto beans. And once they've heated through, I'm going to start mashing them. And here you can see that there's really not a lot of liquid and it is going to thicken once you start mashing and cooking these beans. So right about here is a good texture to the beans because as they set and cool they're going to get really thick I, again I don't want these runny when I'm trying to put the chimichangas together so you want them to be thick okay so my beans are done and I want to set them aside and let them cool once the meat and the beans are cooled I'm ready to assemble my chimichangas and today I'm using store-bought flour tortillas now if you want to do the homemade version of this I will link my other video below and there are several brands and and 
different types of flour tortillas at the store. I went with this brand. They seem to be semi-cooked and I wanted to see how they come out with this recipe. I'm also going to use eight ounces of sharp cheddar cheese. I have some shredded and some cut into chunks because in the last video you guys mentioned you want to see how it is shredded. And here is my cold ground beef and the beans. And as you can see, the beans are definitely thick, so they'll be easy to assemble. They won't ooze all over the place. So now it's time to assemble them. And again, if you want to see my homemade flour tortilla chimichanga recipe, I'll link it below. So now I am going to speed things up a bit and start assembling the chimichangas. Okay, so I managed to assemble eight chimichangas. Now, to answer some of the comments and questions you had from my last chimichanga video, I am going to do a couple of things. I'm going to bake two, fry two, and then I'm going to freeze these four. I'm going to put them in the freezer for two hours. Once they are frozen, just like they are right here, I'm going to put them in a Ziploc bag and I'll store them for later. And I just wanted to show you that, yes, you can definitely prepare these ahead of time, freeze them, pay no mind to my messy freezer, and then you can bake them later. But for now, I'm going to bake two. These are not frozen, by the way. These are the ones that we just made. I'm going to bake two of them, and I will be baking these in a preheated oven at 425 degrees for 20 minutes. And I'm not even going to brush them with oil. If you really want them crispy and you want to bake them in the oven, you can spray them with Pam or brush them with oil, but I'm not doing any of that. I just want to show you what it's like to bake them, just to give you an idea for those that are curious. And for the other two, I'm going to fry them. And of course, I'm using my scientific method of checking the temperature of the oil, just tossing something in. If it starts to fry and float, I'm going to start frying. But you definitely want to fry these at somewhere between 350 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I've added the oil. It's preheated. So now I'm going to lay this seam side down. And I didn't put a toothpick. If you're not one to just really fuss with your chimichanga and the oil, you can put a toothpick to make sure that it stays closed. But what I like to do is place it seam side down in the hot oil and just hold it there for around 30 seconds just to make sure that it fries closed. And I will say this, I normally make my own flour tortillas and I, I cook them and they stay soft and pliable and I really don't have an issue having to hold it down for long. But with these store-bought ones, these in particular, maybe the softer ones might not do this, but these seem to be semi-cooked, not all the way through, and they kind of seem less pliable. I find that I kind of have to baby it a little bit more. So if you're using that type of flour, store-bought flour tortilla, then you might have to hold it in place a little longer. Just bear that in mind. And another question and comment that you guys had was if you could deep fry these. Again, if you deep fry them, 
unless you close them or maybe freeze them first to make sure they stay in place, you might have a big mess on your hand. They might open up. Now, as you can see, this one kind of wants to open up, so I'm holding it. So you might opt to use a softer flour tortilla from the store if you don't want to make your own. So maybe that'll help you guys in the comment section if you have some of those questions. Uh, these are some of the things you might face when you're trying to fry these. You'll want to fry these until everything is golden brown and crispy. That may take a couple of minutes or maybe less. It, it just depends how hot you have your oil. So these are done. I'm going to remove them from the oil and they are definitely crispy and crunchy. And this one sort of started to burn and overcook, but it's okay. It's still edible. It's just gonna be really crunchy. Okay, so my baked and fried chimichangas are done. And as you can see, these are really crunchy and crispy on the exterior. And actually the baked ones turned out crunchy as well. They, they didn't get that deep golden brown fried color, but if you want maybe a healthier option to a not so healthy chimichanga, there you go. I also wanted to show you that I bake these while they were frozen and I did notice I had to cook them an extra five minutes. So again, I'm baking these at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and the ones that, that I made and baked right away, I cooked them for 20 minutes, but these, it took 25. And as you can see, the inside is completely warmed or heated through, the cheese is melty. So that's a good cook time if you wanna cook these while they're still frozen. Okay, I'm going to make this easy avocado salsa. Here I'll be using a half cup of this Mexican cream, table cream. You could use sour cream in place of that. I'm also using some avocado dip that I need to use. These are three two ounce containers. You can just use one large fresh avocado. I'm also using a half cup of green salsa. This is leftover salsa that I had in the fridge. You can use a store-bought kind if you like, and some fresh cilantro. I'm just going to pop this into the blender, give it a whirl, and it's just going to be this creamy avocado salsa dip. It's really delicious. Okay, so another thing I wanted to address is in the last video, I saw a lot of comments saying that that's not how you make a chimichanga. You have to dress it with this and pour this on top of it. Well, you definitely can do that if that's what you like, but my family, they like to crunch on the chimichanga. They like to dip it and crunch, and I kind of agree. I feel like if you dress it and pour things over it, it kind of gets soggy by the time you're done with it, but definitely if that's the way you like to garnish it, you want to do it that way because it's you eating it. So here we're going to dip it in this delicious avocado salsa, but again, I always say do what you prefer. So the chimichangas are done and it's time to eat. So I hope you guys give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.